The biggest benefit of using layers is to organize yourself and your file and potentially if you're sharing your file with someone else. And so there are times when you may need to um, move or reposition your layers or reposition the content on the layers or group them into like categories. Um, so what you can do is you can literally drag and drop them to where you need them to be visually on the layers panel. If you remember from the lecture, the layers panel works like a transparency projector that you might remember from elementary school. And basically pretend that you're looking down from the top of the layers panel. And whatever's on layer one, in my example, is going to block out anything on layer two, which, uh, well, let's call it layer three since it's labeled layer three, which will block out anything on the background copy layer, which will then block out anything on layer two. And if anything's on layer two, it'll block out anything on the background layer, not the background copy layer. And so I can illustrate this by selecting layer one, and I'm just going to put a big red rectangle on there. And because, let's do edit fill, fill with the foreground color. If I fill that, and now it's on layer one, it's blocking out anything beneath it. But if I drag it and I reposition it, and I make it the second layer from the top, so now layer three is sitting on top of layer one, I'll first see whatever's on layer three, which is that weird circle selection of the head that I created. And then beneath it, I'll see layer one, which is the red square. You can continue that down the layers panel by saying, now I'll see anything on the background layer. Um, and then layer th um, two and the background layer beneath that, I can't see anything because this background copy layer is solid. I'd have to erase something on it to be able to see through it. And so let's do that, right? Let's put something on layer two. I'm gonna put, let's say, a big awkward blue circle, right? So I have the selection made, I have layer two selected. Let's change our foreground color to blue and I'm gonna fill it. There's lots of ways to fill this. I'm just gonna do this way. This is the way I've been showing you my videos. Oh, what did I do? Oh, <laughs> I even confused myself. So I put this big circle on layer two and if we zoom in on the layers panel, because the background copy layer, layer one, and layer three are sitting above it, it's blocking out that circle. I can see it on the layer, but my selection that I have selected, you can't see it, it's not visible in the document. Um, if I were to take, let's say, the eraser tool, which we haven't learned yet, so you don't have to do this part, you can just watch, and I was to erase part of the background copy layer, I would start to see through and I would be able to see the circle that I created on that other layer. Now this, um, this eraser, I have a soft edge set. Up here on your uh, options bar, I chose, this is uh, 1100 pixels wide, it's a big brush, and the hardness is set to zero, so it's really fuzzy on the edge. And so you don't have to, if we take a step back here, you don't have to erase the whole thing. What you could do is you could come kind of across here and create some sort of fuzziness to your document or you can show through or blend images together um, by allowing certain images to, to show through to others. Now if we did the same thing, let's make this a little bit bigger. If we did the same thing to layer two, if I, if I erased on layer two, I would start to see through to the background layer again. And you can create kind of different effects by using the transparency and the opaqueness of the different layers. Um, some other things that you might want to do for organization for your layers are to rename them. You can double click a layer and you can rename it. So I'm going to rename this the head. Maybe this is red rectangle. This is, I think background copy is a good description of that. This could be blue orb. And now I know what's on each layer. I know what I'm getting into if I'm looking at this file. I know this is the head. I know this is a red rectangle and that can help me edit the file more efficiently. Last but not least, you may end up using lots of layers and in that case it would be a good idea to group your layers. When you group your layers, actually I'm going to tell you about two things, but we'll group them first. When you group your layers, you can group any layers together that you want as long as you can select them and they're in a row. When you select the layers, you can choose a little folder at the bottom right hand corner of your layers panel. It will create a new group and then you could rename the group whatever it happens to be, statue. Now, maybe I didn't group the head into it because I'm working on the head right now, but when I'm done the head, I could drag it and I could drop it into my grouping and I could then make it part of the group. And so I could collapse this and when I look at the image, it's kind of nice and clean. I know I have statue parts and I know I have background parts. 
You could also turn the eyeball off and on to view or not view the image at the same time. Um, you can expand it and you could turn the eyeball off on each layer individually. And so maybe you just want to see what colors you've added to the project here and so you have these two orbs for whatever reason. Um, or you want to see how these two images work together. And you can turn them on and off for organization. In the next video, I will show you how to color label your layers if that's something you're interested in. And I'll show you how to lock your images if you don't want or if you want to prevent editing them, editing them by accident.